In this video, we're going to solve this pretty long initial value problem that includes discontinuities. We're going to do that with Laplace transforms. Now, as you know, we can actually think of this system right here as a mass on a spring or some kind of harmonic oscillator with a mass of one kilogram and a spring constant of one newton per meter and a forcing function that looks something like this. Uh, we don't force the spring for three seconds. We force it with a newton of one in the positive direction for three seconds after that, and then we stop. Uh, this mass on a spring would also have uh, an initial position of equilibrium, and it's initially at rest. Okay, let's start solving this thing. Normally, the first step is going to be to take a Laplace transform of the entire differential equation. We can't do that quite as easily with the forcing function in this form. So what we want to do is we want to start by rewriting this forcing function using what we learned in class. That's how to rewrite that forcing function using step functions. And now we can rewrite the differential equation and it's in a form that we can take the Laplace transform of. Okay, let's take a Laplace transform. Okay, there's the Laplace transform of our entire differential equation. Fortunately, in this example, our initial conditions are zero. So that simplifies our lives a little bit. Now the goal is to solve algebraically for the Laplace transform of x, or capital X of s. I factored out a capital X of s from the left-hand side and now I can divide by x squared plus 1. So we've solved for the Laplace transform of our solution here. And I actually wrote this in kind of a funny way to give you a better idea of what we're going to do with our partial fractions. This term right here is something that we need to split up into two pieces using partial fractions. The cool thing is that that term and that term are exactly the same, so we can just do partial fractions once. You'll also notice, as we did in class, I'm pulling out the uh, exponential from the numerator, and the reason I'm doing that is because it makes the partial fraction uh, a whole lot easier. So I've set up the partial fraction. Now I'm going to multiply through by the denominator and see if I can solve for a, b, and c. This is the result when you multiply through by the denominator here. I'm distributing out my terms, and I'm going to group like terms together. And as you know from class, there are a couple different ways to solve for a, b, and c in this scenario. I'm doing it, um, I think, what we call the super fun awesome way in class, uh, where we're actually matching terms from the right-hand side and the left-hand side, kind of like we did with um, undetermined coefficients in the previous chapter. So we know by comparing the left and the right-hand sides that this a term is just going to be a 1. The c, s term has to be 0 because we have no s terms on this side of the equation. And similarly, this a plus b term has to be 0. That's really quickly going to give you the answers, a equals 1, b equals negative 1, and c equals 0. Now the whole point of this entire partial fraction that we've been doing is so that we can rewrite this Laplace transform of our solution in a way that we can actually do an inverse transform on. So let's take the Laplace transform of our solution, that capital X of S, and let's rewrite it down here. Now this is what capital X of S looks like, and I am going to distribute through my exponentials just so that we have four terms that we can deal with separately. So now we have four terms and we can take the inverse transform of each one of these terms to get our final solution. Don't forget the Laplace transform properties that we're going to be using to do this. For the first term and the third term, we're actually going to be using the very simple property directly from the Laplace transform table. And for the second term and the fourth term, we're going to be using the red property here from this table. Now for both the second and the fourth term, the capital F of S from this formula here is just going to be S over S squared plus 1. Do an inverse transform on that to get little f of t, and you get cosine of t. Of course, the inverse transform of this entire term here uh, requires us to use an a value of 3. And the inverse transform of just this term is going to then be cosine of the quantity t minus 3 times the step function u of t minus 3. Let's write out the answer. So I didn't do this last step in the shortest way possible. You'll notice that each of these first two terms have a u of t minus 3 step function attached to them. Um, clearly we should have expected that from the beginning because each one of these terms in the Laplace transform have an exponential uh, to the negative 3s next to them. So the shortest way to do this problem may not have been to multiply this thing out and deal with four different terms, but I wanted you to see each one of these terms done separately. So in short, maybe a little nicer way to write this solution would be this right here. And writing it in this form I think demonstrates a little bit more clearly that we really just have two um, jumps as we say in our answer, and our final answer can be written as a piecewise function with three different pieces. Here's the answer written out as a piecewise function. Maybe it's a slightly more clear way to show what's actually happening. And I encourage you to look at what the graph of this thing looks like. Plot it with your favorite uh, plotting tool and compare that result to what you expect to get from a mass on a spring 
with no initial position or velocity with a forcing function that looks something like this. All right, let's go back down and get you a video quiz. So what I want you to do is solve this initial value problem. Now I've changed things just a little bit. This can still be thought of as a mass on a spring, but I've included some damping. I've also given just a little bit of initial velocity, and I've made the actual value of the forcing a little bit bigger, but for a shorter period of time. So solve this thing out and also um, take a look at the graph. Let me know what the graph looks like when you're done and make sure that your answer makes sense. All right, I'll see you in class.